So, hello and congratulations if you've managed to find this video because it will be the last video on NoFap you watch. If you finish this video, you're never going to watch porn again. And that's basically because this is a totally different method to anything I've seen before. So I'm not going to hide it. This is based on something called the Easy Peasy Method, which comes from a free ebook that you can find. I'll leave it a link in the description. Definitely go read it. But anyway, the reason why this method is so much better is because it's totally different to anything out there and I've not heard of it spoken about much on the NoFap community and that's why I think I definitely have to speak on it. It's basically every other method and I'm sure all the other videos you've watched they focus so much on either willpower or self-discipline and this is an issue because imagine a bow and arrow and you pull it back and this is kind of like the willpower, this is how I see willpower and um, it's great but you have to hold it there, that's the thing and if you slip a tiny amount the arrow goes flying off and there you go, relapse. But if you never draw the arrow back in the first place, there you go. This is why the method is different and why it works so much, because it doesn't focus on willpower and self-discipline, which are bound to fail. So yeah, let's get right into the video. So to begin with, we need to see pornography as what it is, and that's as an addiction and not as a sort of habit. So the thing is, is any user, even the most casual user who only does it once a week, let's say, which is definitely bullshit, let's be honest with you, they are addicted. That's the thing. That is just the long and short of it. Basically, we're all addicted because it's so hard to stop. You couldn't go an hour, like, let alone an hour a week, but like quitting for life, no one, like so many people could not do that. And then the other thing is, is that we try and convince ourselves that it's good for us. So we have all these things. We say it helps you sleep. We say it helps relieve our stress. All these things, which even though we might not consciously believe them, somewhere subconsciously, we do see something positive in masturbation. So that's just there in everyone. I mean, we probably need to instill this sort of image of this addiction. So imagine a heroin user. Let's just keep it on par with that. You wouldn't ever envy a heroin user. You wouldn't ever want to be them. And I'm sure if you asked a heroin user if they could go back to their first time ever doing it and rip the needle out of the arm, they'd say, absolutely, yeah. And the thing is, is I'm sure if you said the same thing to yourself about if you could go back to the first time you ever watched porn and close the tab and never go on it again, you would also say yes. That is because you don't want to watch porn. You don't want to, ever. These things that we call urges, that, I mean, that's total bullshit, really, isn't it? There's no urge ever to watch porn. You don't want to ever watch it because you know in the back of your mind how bad that is for you. The whole, the reason you're watching it in the first place is because you're brainwashed to A, think it's something decent for you, and B, is because your addicted brain is making you do it. And equally, you don't get anything from it. So this whole idea of porn as a stress reliever is because it creates the stress that needs to be relieved. So the fact that your brain is constantly searching for this next dopamine hit is why it relieves stress, is why it helps you sleep. It doesn't do that on its own. So this is the thing, it's like heroin users having crazy withdrawal symptoms and then they take a hit of heroin and that totally calms them down. But is it the heroin that's calmed them down really or the heroin that's created the problem in the first place? So that's it. You have to see pornography as not a filler of a void, but the creator of the void itself. So that's what we need to learn to get on this journey and basically the whole crux of the easy peasy method and why it works so well is because it's about understanding. And what we need to understand is that even subconsciously to some level, all of us have a fear of giving up pornography. That's just a fact. And all of us, we subconsciously do see certain benefits to it. So of course there, there's a scientific benefits, which have all been disproven by the way, pretty much things like decrease testicular cancer or whatever they say, but I mean, that, that's all bullshit as well. But Primarily, these mental benefits that we assign to pornography, which are also just total fallacy. So things like, like we're saying, stress relief, sleep, like improvement, whatever. So these are all things that we do subconsciously still believe. The reason why most people fail is because they see NoFap as a sacrifice. They see, I mean, everything in NoFap is ingrained to enforce this idea that what you're doing is you're giving up a pleasurable activity for benefits. So even all these willpower arguments that we're seeing, they tell us it's gonna be hard to beat, it's gonna be almost impossible, you're gonna to have to fight every day. Day counters do the exact same thing. They say, look, you're doing so well, you've gone 20 days without porn. This, is, I mean, it's crazy. It's like, you're basically telling yourself, well done, for quitting something. And if you're saying well done for quitting something, it means you've lost something. And the fact is, is you really haven't. There is nothing to gain from pornography. So an example the book uses is a really great one and I think it works perfectly. It's basically this. It says a man has a cold sore and he goes to a pharmacy and they give him a cream and he puts the cream on and the cold sore goes away. But then a day later it comes back. So he puts the cream on again and it goes away again. But this repeats and it keeps repeating and every single time the cold sore comes back bigger and it covers more and more of his face 
and the time between the, the cream applications becomes quicker as well. So now he can't even leave the house without this cream. When he goes on holiday, he has to bring 10 bottles of the cream. And this cream's costing him £100 a time. And this is it. So then he goes onto the Google, onto the Google, he goes onto Google and he types in about this problem he's having. And he finds out that recent scientific research has shown that actually it's the cream that's causing the cold sores. So what does he do? Does he carry on using the cream? Of course he fucking doesn't. Look, he quits. And this is exactly the same as with pornography. We sh it's, it's just a matter of quitting, that's it. There is nothing sacrificed, nothing lost. It's like the guy with the cold sore. There's, it's just a disease. Once you find out the issue, you quit. So then let's analyze the other notion, which is that it's physically hard to quit pornography. So this is it. It's, we're saying that the dopamine in your brain has somehow physically wired it to make it extremely difficult to quit. And again, the book, and I'm gonna say this is kind of not true. So I'm sure there have been countless times throughout your life where you've had to quit porn, and you have. And I'm sure you're happy about it. I'm sure there's been weeks in your life where you haven't even thought about it because of various things. Maybe you've been on holiday with a family member, maybe you've been sharing a room with a sibling for a bit, maybe one of your relatives have passed away and you haven't touched porn for a week. This is it. During that time, you wouldn't have thought once about it and there's no bodily, urge it's not like a heroin addiction that you're physically in pain and just dying because you're not touching pornography i mean the the actual physical withdrawals aren't actually that bad for pornography compared to a lot of other drugs the only thing that makes the urges exist the only thing that makes nofap so difficult is the mental urges and the brainwashing we have of losing something i mean every time you've relapsed in the past i'm sure there was a little part of you that's thinking that, that you've lost something. There's a little part in your brain that said, oh my God, I wish I could just do this again. I wish I had porn back in my life. I'm so envious of all these other people who can just fap once a week and that's it. I mean, this is it. Our brains are so brainwashed to believe that porn actually gives something and enriches life that that is what's making us relapse. So I'm sure by now you've figured out the point of this video, but it's basically saying porn offers you nothing. So I want you to look at yourself and say to yourself now, whenever your last session was, that was the last time you were ever going to fap and you are happy about it. So that's it. Don't feel bad about it. And I mean, subconsciously, everyone does. And I mean, even now, I'm sure you're doubting this advice and you're saying various things, but it's not true. There is absolutely nothing porn offers to you. And once you realize that, it's as easy to walk away as the guy with the cold sore and the cream. You just step away from it and don't think about it ever again. So if you want more in-depth knowledge about this, and um, I'm sure, you know, you really should. It, like, go read the book. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. Just type in the easy peasy method on Google. It's to, like the second link down. It's a totally free ebook that basically explains everything I've said in this video in a much more in-depth way. And it's just, it's great. It's one of the best resources on NoFap. And, Honestly, something that surprisingly I haven't really seen anywhere in the community. So yeah, check it out. And anyway, if you're new to the channel, I'm Tom. If you're old to the channel, thank you for still being here. And yeah, drop a subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment, and see you.